at Hokage Tower. So how was your first C rank mission here, Zen? It was fine. Naruto. Damn Dobi and Kakashi were the only ones who got to fight Sasuke thought. Okay Kakashi give me a report of the mission. Hiruzen. Kakashi told him about the encounter with Zabuza and Haku. And the death of the tyrant Gato. Well good job for completing the mission. Since this mission turned from C to A rank. You will be getting A rank payment. Hiruzen. Can we leave now old man. Naruto. Naruto be more respectful to the Hokage. Sakura. It is okay. I don't mind Naruto calling me that. You all can leave except for Kakashi Hirazan. So what do you want to talk about Lord Hokage? Kakashi. Did Naruto display any other abilities on the mission? Hirazan. Yes he did. Kakashi. Kakashi told about Naruto's Alita Vista his second release form, his impressive swordsmanship, Bala, his regeneration and his ability to walk on air. How did he become so powerful in such a short amount of time? Hirazan. He said regained his powers that he had in his last life. Kakashi. Well anyway Kakashi notify me when Naruto uses his abilities. Hiruzen. Is it to come up with countermeasures in case he decides to betray the leaf? Kakashi. Yes dot I hope it won't come to that. You can leave now Hiruzen. Kakashi left. Time skip. They did about 30 D rank missions while the Chunin exams were fast approaching. Kakashi got his team together and showed up on time for once probably to avoid pissing off Sakura. They were standing on a small bridge. Guys I'm really proud of all of you. Said Kakashi I smiling as he appeared on the rail of the bridge. You have all come a long way so I have recommended all of you for the Chunin exams. If you want to participate go tomorrow to room 301 in the academy and submit these applications. Said Kakashi throwing one to all three of them. Bye. Said Kakashi before disappearing with body flicker. Sasuke walked off and Sakura followed trying to get a date as she obviously didn't get the hint that Sasuke wasn't interested. Naruto decided to get some ramen. As Naruto was heading to Ichiraku's he heard Konohamaru yelling let me go. Naruto went to where he heard the commotion and saw Itamari and Konkuro. Konkuro was squeezing Konohamaru painfully by his scarf. Konkuro put him down you're going to get us in trouble. Said Tamari. Relax Tamari, we've got a bit of time until he gets here we might as well have some fun. Replied Konkuro. I suggest you listen to her. If you don't I may be forced to kill you Naruto. Konkuro glared at Naruto. He looks cute Tamari thought. You know what kid, you've offended me so I'm going to teach this boy your lesson, respect your betters. Said Konkuro who pulled back a fist and was about to slug Konohimaru in the face. Naruto appeared in an instant with his sword pressed against Konkuro's neck. Like I said I suggest you listen and you are not my better. Said Naruto. Konkuro let Konohimaru down and let him move away and leave the area while Naruto backed off, Konkuro then pulled off what looked to be a mummy of his back. What are you doing Konkuro? Are you going to use the crow for this? Asked Tamari slightly worried. Hankura you are an embarrassment to our village. Said a voice from nowhere which sounded bored. The owner of the voice appeared in a swirl of sand in front of his comrades. Oh hey Garth. Said Konkuro scared. He turned and faced Naruto. Shukaku's vessel. Said Kurama. A jinchuriki like me ha huh, Naruto thought. I apologize for my brother. Said Gara bowing deeply. You don't have to apologize. Naruto. What is your name? Gara. My name is Naruto Alquiora Cipher. You can be Naruto or Alquiora Naruto. Would you be taking part in the Chunin exams? If so I look forward to fighting you. Gar. Yes I will be participating in Chunin exams Naruto. Well then look forward to killing you, Gara said with a sadistic grin. You are welcome to try. Naruto. After that Gara and his team left. Naruto went to Ichiraku to eat ramen. After eating ramen he went home. The next day. Naruto met up with Sasuke and Sakura along his walk to the academy, so they all went together. When they arrived on the second floor they saw Rock Lee being beaten up by two guards. Naruto could tell he was faking being weak. I wish you could do that to the Achiha brat Kurama while seeing Lee get beaten up. Or better yet kill him. I have no interest in getting involved with your vendetta against the Achiha clan Naruto thought. The guy who ruined your life is an Achiha so best believe you are getting involved with my vendetta. Kurama. Well he is the only I will kill. Naruto. Suddenly a punch was aimed at Tintin. Naruto appeared in an instant and blocked the punch aimed at her. Most of those around were surprised at how fast Naruto moved. Sasuke walked up with Sakura close behind and said well you're at it drop the genjutsu it's pathetic. Most were wondering what Sasuke was talking about until the guard spoke up so you saw through the genjutsu huh? The guard charged at Sasuke while Sasuke begun to swing a kick. In an instant Lee appeared between both and stopped them with his hands. That's some chakra he's got in his arm thought Sasuke. What are you doing? Aren't you the one who said we should hide our true strength Lee? 
said Neji a boy who had piercing wide eyes with a slight lavender tint to them while walking up to Lee. The boy had noticeably long, black hair which reached the middle of his back and was tied back a few inches above the end, while two straps attached to a smaller headband underneath his ninja forehead protector framed the sides of his face. He had very fair skin, and he also wore a black headband that he wore snugly over his forehead. He wore a khaki shirt, dark brown shorts, and blue shinobi sandals. He also had bandages wrapped around his right arm, chest, and right leg. Sorry but I, Lee broke off and looked at Sakura and then blushed. My name is Rock Lee. You are Sakura right? Please be my girlfriend I vow to protect you with my life. Lee said to Sakura. Definitely no. Sakura said. Why? Lee. Because you are weirdo. Sakura. Hey you what is your name? Neji said to Sasuke. It is common courtesy to give your own name before asking someone else's. Sasuke. Hey you are a rookie aren't you? How old are you? Neji. I am not obliged to answer that. Sasuke. What's that? Neji. Hey Sasuke Naruto come on let's go. Sakura. After she said that they went to walk to the examination room. But they were stopped by Lee. Hey you with the attitude hold on. Lee said to Sasuke. What do you want? Sasuke. I want to fight right here and right now. Lee. You want to fight me here and now. Sasuke. Yes. My name is Rock Lee. You said it is common courtesy for a challenger to give his name first Sasuke Chiha. Lee. Um so you know me. Sasuke. I challenge you. Everyone is always talking about the Achiha clan and how great they are. I want to see if it is true. I figured you would be a good test for me. And also, Sakura, I love you. Lee. No, I would never love someone like you. Those eyebrows of yours are gross. Sakura screamed. You have heard of the Uchiha clan and yet you are challenging me. You must be even more psycho than you look. If that is possible. You want to know more about my clan than I will teach you the hard way. Sasuke. Bring it on. Lee said. Excellent to match up against the number one rookie. I will draw him out and get him to reveal his technique and I will prove myself to you guys sensei. Lee thought. Okay, let's fight. Sasuke. Sasuke has unlocked his Sharingan for plot's sake. You should take this serious. I am currently the strongest Genin in the leaf. Lee. Finally interested, Sasuke accepts his challenge and attacks. He's instantly met with Lee's leaf whirlwind and goes flying backwards. Getting back up, Sasuke prepares, resorting to his Sharingan to figure out Lee's technique this time. Again, this is futile, and Lee explains it's because his techniques are neither ninjutsu or genjutsu, but mere taijutsu, also known as martial arts. But hand-to-hand -hand combat, the Sharingan isn't helpful, even if he can see the techniques, one's body cannot move fast enough to react. Lee uses the shadow of the dancing leaf to kick off his next move in order to finish off Sasuke, but a large turtle stops him before he carries this out. The turtle seemingly reprimands Lee for using a forbidden technique, leaving Team 7 to think the turtle is Lee's sensei. Might Guy, his actual sensei, appears on top of the turtle and punches Lee across the face as punishment, proceeding to hug him and cry afterward. Team 7 are dumbstruck, and Sasuke can't believe he was beaten by what he perceives as a freak. Guy asks the team how his eternal rival, Kakashi, is doing. He's ahead in their match record, which stands at 50 wins and 49 losses. Guy also says that he is much faster and stronger than Kakashi. When Guy leaves, Lee confesses that he is not the strongest Genin Neji Haika, his teammate is. Naruto tells Sasuke why he lost, saying that Lee obviously trains harder than him. In the end, the team focuses their attention on the Chiknin exams. After the fight the Team 7 and Lee all headed to room 301, where the first phase of the Chunin exam would be held. When they got there got there they were greeted by Kiba. So once again the rookies are together again Hayakamaru. Said Kiba. Ino hugged Sasuke from behind, causing Sakura to begin yelling at her, and this kept up for a while. So troublesome. Said the familiar voice of Shikamaru with Choji close behind munching on chips. Well Shikamaru I didn't expect to see you here. Isn't this too much work for you? Naruto. Yeah but Asuma made us so here we are. Replied Shikamaru sounding very bored. You guys might want to keep it down you're attracting a lot of attention. Said a boy with black eyes with grey hair kept in a ponytail wearing circular glasses. He also wore a dark purple shirt with a white undershirt and a white sash around his waist worn at an angle, dark purple pants, blue sandals, and a shuriken holster on his right leg. Who are you? Asked Sasuke. Me? I'm Kabuto Yakushi. You must be the rookie Genin. He stated. Yeah we are. Replied Sasuke. Well maybe I can help you out then. Said Kabuto who then proceeded to talk about who came to the exams and what generally happened, as well as his seven in a row streak of failure, and finally his ninja info cards. He still insults the sound village. 
Show me what you have on Gara of the Desert, Rock Lee and Naruto Cipher said Sasuke. Okay first up Gara of the Desert. His teammates are Tamari and Konkuro of the Desert who are also his siblings, and it says here he has completed 8 C ranks and a B rank without getting a single scratch. In fact he has never been injured. The Genin were stunned until Kabuto moved on. Rock Lee teammates Neji Hyuga and Tenten, Sensei Might Guy. His taijutsu has increased dramatically over the past 12 months, but the rest of his skills are virtually non-existent. He has completed 20 D ranks and 11 C ranks. Just as Kabuto was about to read Naruto's info. Naruto grabbed a card and tore it apart. You should not give someone's information without their permission Kabuto. Naruto. Shikamaru grew suspicious of Kabuto. Because he had classified information that only Akage would have access to. Naruto was also suspicious of him. Hey that guy called us little. Said one of the sound genin. He had spiky dark hair and dark eyes. He wore a beige shirt with two black stripes and three prints which said death down the front. His forehead protector had a face guard. As with his teammates, he wore a snake pattern scarf around his neck. Well let's teach him a lesson. Said the other sound genin. He had bandages covering most of his face, leaving only his left eye uncovered. He also wore a large poncho with long sleeves, a snake pattern scarf around his neck, and a straw ink coat protruding from the back of his scarf. His back was hunched which made him look smaller than he actually was. The sound team dashed around the room before the one who spoke first threw a kunai at Kabuto, who jumped back to avoid them however, in an instant the genin who looked like a mummy, revealed a gauntlet with holes in it, and swung his fist barely missing Kabuto. Kabuto stood up and then his glasses broke. Oh I see it was that kind of an attack. He said taking off his glasses however something else was happening, and he clutched his stomach in pain, coughing up blood. Kabuto are you alright? Asked Sakura. Put this in your information. The Ganon of the sound will all be tuned in when this exam is over. Said the sound ninja who threw the kunai. Suddenly a large cloud of smoke appeared, and about 16 leaf ninja were revealed as the smoke faded away. The big one in the middle had a sadistic grin and said I am Ibiki Marino, the first proctor of these tune-in exams, and as of now, your worst nightmare. Thanks for waiting. I am Marino Ibiki, the examiner for the Chunin selection exam's first test, Ibiki said, we will now start the first test in the Chunin exam. Instead of your current seating arrangements. You will pick one of these numbers and sit in the seat where the numbers are. We will then head out the exams, Ibiki said, now there are many important rules to this first test. I'll write it on the board while I explain, but questions will not be allowed, so listen carefully. Rule 1, the test works on a point deduction system, unlike regular tests, you all start off with a perfect score of 10 points. If you answer 3 questions wrong your score is 7. Rule 2 every time a person is caught cheating they will lose 2 points, get caught cheating 5 times and you fail. That is what the sentinels you see to your sides are for, they will monitor you. Anyone caught cheating doesn't deserve to be here. Finally you will be scored together with your team, and if one person on your team gets a 0 you all fail. The 10th question will be given out 45 minutes from now. Finished to Biki. Sakura paled and started worrying about Naruto getting a zero, as she still didn't think he was intelligent, but rather, saw him as an idiot. Now begin. Announced to Biki. Everyone started to read the questions, and many quickly realized that they didn't know the answers for many, if not all of the questions, and came to the conclusion that they had to cheat. There were many different methods of cheating such as using dujutsu, using pets to find answers mirrors and even jutsus. Naruto asked if he could go to bathroom. He got permission from Ibiki. When he got inside the bathroom he created a shadow clone. He let the clone turn into a fly. After exiting the bathroom Naruto's clone flew above the other Chunin applicants looking at their answers. After a while he cancelled the clone jutsu. When he did all the memories of the clone came flooded into his mind. He answered all the questions. Now all I have to do is sit back and wait. Thought Naruto. As Naruto was about to lean back a kunai whizzed past his face and into the test of the person behind him. What was that all about? Asked the genin. Five strikes and you're out you just failed the test. Said the chunin who threw the kunai. What it can't be. Cried the genin. The trend of failure continued and many teams failed, about 15 in total, and now the time of the tenth question was approaching. Konkuro chose that time to walk in just as Ibiki was getting ready to ask the tenth question. Ah you've returned. I hope your trip to the bathroom was enlightening. Said Ibiki with a small grin. Ankuro appeared nervous but walked back to his seat while dropping a tiny rolled up scroll near Tamari. Now listen carefully and try not to let the rules frighten you. Very well rule number one, each of you is free to not take the question, it's your decision. Begun Ibiki. Whoa so what's the catch, say we don't want to take the question. Asked Tamari. If you refuse to take the tenth question regardless of your answers to the other nine you get a zero, meaning you fail along with your teammates. Replied Ibiki. 
Rumors went around of people saying that they would definitely take the question before Ibiki spoke you didn't let me finish. If you choose to take the question and answer it wrong, you and your teammates will be barred from taking the Chunin exams forever. Hey that's bull there are lots of people who have taken this exam before. Said Kiba angrily. Ibiki chuckled and said I guess you're just unlucky, I wasn't making the rules before, but I am now. Of course if you don't want to take it you don't have to. If you're not feeling confident then by all means skip it and come back and try again next year. Said Ibiki who then laughed. Now then the tenth question, those who don't want to take it raise your hand. Your number will be recorded and then you're free to go. Finished Ibiki. After a while the person next to Naruto cracked I'm out. He said and apologized to his teammates. As soon as this happened many more quit. Sakura watched Naruto. She knew Naruto would never raise his hand. I can't let you do this to yourself Naruto. Thought Sakura while she begun to raise her hand. Naruto your teammate is about to raise her hand Kurama. Naruto raised his hand. Many people were shocked at this turn of events, but then Naruto started to talk. You don't have that kind of authority to ban someone from taking the Chunin exams. You are not a Kage. Also other Kage can simply host the Chunin exams in their village or promote their own ninja. Naruto so are you willing to take the last question Ibiki? Yes Naruto. This decision is one that could change your life. If for any reason you would rather quit, now is your last chance. Said Ibiki giving up is for losers, and I Naruto Okuiora Cypher am certainly not a loser, replied Naruto interesting his words has given the others some backbone. He has persuaded them into staying. 78 left, more than I expected, but I don't see anyone wavering I think that's it. Thought Ibiki while looking around. Achuna nodded to him and he nodded back. Well then I admire your determination, if nothing else for those of you remaining, there is only one thing left to do, and that's for me to tell you. You all passed the first exam. Said Ibiki. What, do you mean we pass where is the tenth question? Asked Sakura. There wasn't one or at least not a written one, your decision to stay here was the answer to the tenth question. Said Ibiki smiling widely. So does that mean those other nine questions you gave us were just a waste of time? Is that what you're saying? Asked Tamari. No not at all, quite the opposite. They had a very important underlying purpose, the first nine questions were to test your ability to surreptitiously gather strategic intelligence under the most adverse circumstances. Informed Ibiki. Oh well that clears up everything. Said Tamari confused. Let me explain. My objective was to test how well you function as a part of a team, which is why you were scored as a team, so you would know that everything you would do or fail to do would affect your teammates. I wanted to see how you would cope with the pressure. The first nine questions on the test were difficult or as you may have realized, too difficult for any Genin to be able to solve. I imagine many of you quickly realized you had to cheat to have any chance of passing. In fact the test was designed to encourage cheating, it almost demanded it. Of course it would have done you little good if you had no one to cheat from which is why I had two Chunin disguised to sit in with you. Those who were caught at it failed. Better not to cheat than to cheat clumsily. Information, it can be the most valuable weapon in battle. How well you gather it can be the difference between failure and success. There will be times when you will have to risk your life to get in. Said Ibiki taking off his forehead protector and revealing a mangled skull. Man what a mess. Scars and puncture wounds, what he must have endured. Whispered Sasuke. Of course you must always consider the source of your information. Intelligence gathered from the enemy is not necessarily accurate, always bear this in mind, disinformation can be worse than no information at all. It can lead to the death of comrades or the loss of a village. That's why I put you in the position that you would have to gather accurate intelligence, cheat in order to survive, and that's why those who weren't good enough at it were weeded out leaving the rest of you. Finished to picky. Okay, but I'm still not getting what the whole tenth question thing is all about. Said Tamari. You're not, the tenth question was the whole point of the exam, surely you see that? Asked Ibiki. Sure but explain it anyway. Said Sakura. As I said before the purpose was to test you as part of a squad not just individuals. The final question gave you two options, both difficult, play it safe knowing that, that would mean you fail or take a risk and possibly be stuck as again and forever. It was a no-win situation, the type Chunin have to deal with every day. Let me give you a hypothetical, you need to retrieve a sacred document. You have no idea how many ninja there are guarding it furthermore you have reason to believe they expect you. Can you pass up the mission to live another day? No of course not. Many missions Chunin take appear almost suicidal if you think about them, but you do not think about them, you think only of accomplishing the mission through courage and discipline. These are the qualities required of a Chunin squad leader. Those who choose the safer of two paths, those whose determination would falter in the face of adversity, those who would put their comrades' lives in jeopardy worrying about their own lives, those who would save their necks at the price of sacred honor, will never be able to call themselves Chunin, at least while I'm around. 
As for the rest of you, you have successfully answered the 10 questions I put to you. You have earned the right to continue on with the next step. You have passed through the first gate, and I hereby declare this part of the Chunin selection exams completed. There is nothing left but to wish you all good luck. Said Ibiki. Just then something flew through the window. Two kunai attached to a cloth were thrown into the roof, and a person emerged. The person had light brown pupil-less eyes. Her violet hair was done up in a short somewhat spiky ponytail. She was wearing a tan overcoat, complete with a fitted mesh bodysuit that stretched from her neck down to her thighs. She wore a dark orange miniskirt, as well as a leaf forehead protector, a small pendant that looked like a snake fang on a thick cord, rather than a chain to prevent it from being easily torn off in combat, a wristwatch, and shin guards. She also wore a dark blue belt around her waist that connected to her skirt that had an appendage-like sash. This isn't the time to be celebrating. I'm your next proctor, Anko Mitarashi. Said the woman. You're early, again. Said Ibiki. Anko blushed in embarrassment. She then looked around before speaking how many are there. Ibiki you let all these guys pass. Your test was too easy, you must be getting soft. Or it could be a stronger group of candidates this year. Replied Ibiki. Trust me when I'm through with them, more than half will be eliminated. Anko said with a sadistic smirk. More than half? Asked Sakura fearfully. This is going to be fun. You maggots have had it easy so far, but things are going to be different now. Go home now and I'll tell your squad leaders where and when to meet me for the second exam, dismissed. Said Anko. All of the Chunin candidates left. The next day. The Genin were standing in front of a forest surrounded by metal gates three meters high, with heaps of locks and warning signs. Well, nice place. What is it? Said Kiba. This is the location for the second stage of the exam, the 44th Battle Training Zone, but we call it the Forest of Death. Said Anko. Wow this place creeps me out. Said Sakura. Well we call it the Forest of Death for a reason, and soon enough you're going to find out why. Said Anko grinning. Let's just get this over with Naruto said with a bored expression. So looks it like we've got a tough guy. Said Anko smiling before throwing a kunai at Naruto. Before the kunai could hit Naruto he disappeared. Anko looked around for him until she felt something on her neck. She turned around to see Naruto holding his sword. If you value your life then refrain from doing something like that again. Naruto, he is fast thought the other Chunin candidates. The kid is fast. He will certainly be someone interesting to watch. Anko thought after that Naruto sheathed his sword. Anko got back to explaining the test. Now before we begin this test I have something you all need to sign and agree to. It is a standard consent form which shows that if you die the leaf and I are in no way accountable, otherwise if you die I would be held responsible. Said Anko who then started laughing. This test is a survival test you need to get through the battle zone. You will each enter through one of the 44 entrances and need to make your way to the center, to a locked tower. To pass, all you need to do is get a set of these two scrolls, one heaven and the other earth, and arrive at the tower with all of your teammates. Finished Anko. Both scrolls? Asked Sasuke. Yes so half will be going after the heaven scroll, while the other half will be going after the earth scroll. Anything goes, but there is only one rule, you must never open either scroll. Said Anko seriously. The Genin signed the forms. After signing the Monko assigned the teams to a gate. All the Genin arrived at a gate and waited until the signal was given at 3 pm. Time passed until there were 10 seconds to go. Alright maggots the second test begins in 3, 2, 1, now. Announced Anko. The gates opened and all the teams rushed in. Only five minutes and the sounds of a team screaming were heard outside of the forest. Looks like the fun has begun. I feel sorry for those who will face you kid I look forward to seeing to what you achieve kid. Said Anko. With team 7. Well I will leave you two lovebirds alone. Said Naruto before he disappeared. Wait dope. That damn loser Sasuke. Did Naruto just call us lovebirds Sakura blushed. Well I guess I should thank Naruto giving us time alone. Sakura thought. Damn dope why did have to leave me alone with OG useless. Sasuke thought angrily with Naruto. Naruto tracked down a team hidden rain team. Look at what we have here fellas. It's that brat from the leaf. One of the rain ninja be a good boy and hand over your scroll. Bayou of the hidden rain. I am sorry to say I don't have a scroll on me and even if I did. I certainly would not give it to you trash. Naruto who are calling trash. Take this ninja art. Senbin rainstorm. Shigure of the rain. Shigure throwed five umbrellas in the air. The umbrellas spinned in the air. While spinning the umbrellas released a ton of senbin. All the senbin that hit Naruto bounced of HIM due to his hiero. His clothes got torn by the senbin. The rain team were shocked to see the attack did not nothing to Naruto. Are you trash prepared to die now, Naruto said while releasing his spirit pressure, what is this pressure the rain team thought scared while unable to move. Naruto unsheathed his sword. 
He coated it with his spiritual energy. And started a swinging motion. Sorry, Ichigo, but I am make this technique mine now. Jitsuga Tensho. Naruto said as send a large dark green slash at his opponents. The attack destroyed the rain team. No trace was left of them along with their scroll. What a shame, I guess I should just go after another team. Naruto said before he disappeared. But Sasuke and Sakura. Sasuke and Sakura were hopping along the trees and were about halfway to the tower when Sasuke felt that they were being followed. Sasuke put his hand out and mouth followed to Sakura, and she understood. They set up a few wire traps which would launch kunai if tripped, but other than that kept going as fast as they could to the tower. When they were only about 500 meters away a kunai with an explosive tag attached to it landed near them. They all jumped away before it exploded and looked in the direction it came from. The grass ninja with a straw hat was there and looked at Sasuke before speaking. I think your trap making skills need some work, although you were in a rush, after all the prey must never let down its guard in the face of its predator. The ninja looked them in the eye and they saw their deaths. Sasuke and Sakura were greatly affected by the grass ninja's killing intent. Sasuke and Sakura were paralyzed by fear. They couldn't move an inch. Orochimaru used this opportunity to give Sasuke the curse mark. When Sasuke received the mark he became unconscious, I hope your teammate will prove more entertaining than you too. The ninja said before he disappeared just who was that is he gonna go after Naruto? Asked Sakura who was still rather shaken. With Naruto. Naruto was halfway to his team when he felt a dark presence near him. Instantly a large snake came flying in his direction. The snake bit the right of side of Naruto's body. The snake's attack had no effect on Naruto due to his hero. Naruto used his left hand to fire a bala at the snake killing it. After he killed it disappeared in a poof of smoke. Come out Naruto said looking at the direction of the person he sensed. Well it seems that you aren't as helpless as your teammates though it would seem. Said the ninja as he came out. The ninja then proceeded to release some of his killer intent. Naruto then released his spiritual pressure. Naruto's spiritual pressure easily overpowered the ninja's killing intent. You are stronger than Kakashi and Zabuza Naruto said as he read the ninja's power level. You can tell how interesting to think you can stand up and return my killing intent. Orochimaru said while sweating, what is this feeling it feels like killing intent, but more potent Orochimaru thought, I guess you already know my name, but since it is proper etiquette to give one's name before he sends them to the afterlife. I am Naruto Alquiora Cipher, former Quattro Espada. Naruto said as he introduced himself, what a funny child. Orochimaru of the three sign in. Orochimaru said before he started going through hand signs before he could finish he was hit by a bala through the chest. After getting hit by the bala Orochimaru turned into mud. The clone Naruto. Suddenly a sword came flying at him. The sword hit him but bounced off his body. Impossible how can this be the Kusanagi is supposed to be able to cut anything. Orochimaru said shocked weak attacks like that won't affect me. Orochimaru let me show some of my power. Imprison Mursai Lago Naruto said as he released his first form. What is this power and that form Orochimaru said as he felt Naruto's increase of spiritual pressure, if you this survive from this attack, let me know how it feels to get hit by a dot zero Oscuras. Naruto said before he fired it at Orochimaru. The attack destroyed a large part of the forest. Orochimaru was nowhere to be seen. Why didn't just devour his soul? He probably survived that attack. Kurama said because he knew of Naruto's nature as a hollow. What fun would there be in that? Naruto. I just hope you won't be this merciful on that masked man. Kurama. You don't have to worry about that when we meet I will show him the true meaning of despair. Naruto said before reverting back to his base form. Meanwhile with other Chunin exam candidates. What was that explosion was the thought of many. Back to story. Naruto used Sanito to quickly make his way to his team. He arrived to see. Sasuke and Lee were unconscious, Sakura was badly beaten and bleeding, Choji looked beaten up but was on his feet, Ino was passed out and being held by Shikamaru who looked relatively unharmed. The area they were in was torn up, and all the trees around the clearing were missing branches from heavy hits. Would you guys like some help? Asked Naruto from the branch he was standing on. Yes, Shikamaru. Okay since you don't need my help I will take my leave. Naruto. You bastard come help us. Shikamaru yells. Oh great more leaf ninja you guys are like cockroaches slam one down and two more crawl out. Said the bandaged sound ninja. I am just joking Shikamaru. Naruto. Said before using Sanito. Naruto appeared behind the sound ninja. In no time at all the ninja were getting beaten. While this was going on almost all Genin conscious were thinking, is this Naruto? Naruto was about to punch the ninja in the gut but stopped a hair away. Sasuke arrows up covered in purple chakra and had strange marks covering half of his body. Sakura, who did this to you? He asked in a calm voice. We did and you're going to experience the same thing they did. Boasted one of the sound ninja. Zaku no wait. 
cried the ninja Naruto was next to. Slicing sound wave. Yelled Zaku while blasting air out of his palms at Sasuke, Haku, Sakura and Lee. When the dust cleared nothing was there. See Dosu nothing to worry about. Said Zaku before Sasuke appeared behind him and struck him with his forearm, sending him into Naruto, who stabbed both his arms with his sword in quick jabs before kicking him away. Sasuke appeared behind him and grabbed his arms with his foot on his back. You seem very proud of these arms, very attached to them. Said Sasuke while pulling his arms. W what are you doing? Asked Zaku before crying out in pain due to having his arms dislocated. Looks like you're the only one left. Stated Sasuke before walking to Dosu. No stop. Yelled Sakura before clamping onto Sasuke from behind. Please stop. She whimpered. Sasuke turned, looked at her and the marks begun to recede. You two are strong, in fact too strong for us. Said Dosu in pain. We will make a trade, we will give you our scrolls if you spare us. Said Dosu. Keep it. Said Naruto who pulled out two scrolls he obtained before his encounter with Orochimaru. Very well but next time we won't run from you. We will fight. Said Dosu while picking up his teammates and then leaving. After he left there was uncomfortable silence before Naruto spoke up well that was pathetic what have you been doing this whole time. Remember this if you all will die if you remain weak. Naruto said creating clones to carry Sasuke and Sakura. Well let's go, Naruto said before he disappeared with his team. Was that really Naruto? Ino thought. Well let's rest a while here Shikamaru said. Just what has happened to you Naruto? Shikamaru thought. Henton shook Lee. It looks those two were fighting thought Neji before jumping down to Lee and Tenten. Line break. Team 7 arrived at the tower before they went and Sakura told Naruto what happened about how Orochimaru ambushed them, how Sasuke had gotten bitten, and how she tried fighting of the sound ninja until Lee and Team 10 arrived. Sakura know this, if you don't train you are only gonna be a burden to this team. Said Naruto. Sakura was going to retort but Naruto's until told her. Sasuke will become more interested in you if you become stronger. They entered the tower to find a scroll with writing on it hanging from the wall which Sakura started reading. If qualities of heaven are your desire, acquire wisdom to take your mind higher. If earthly qualities are what you lack train your body and prepare to attack. When heaven and earth are open together, the perilous path will be righteous forever. This something is the secret way that guides us from this place today. She finished. Something? Questioned Sasuke. It looks like there is a word missing or something. Replied Sakura. I think it means we should open the scrolls now. Naruto and Sasuke opened one each. The scrolls exploded into smoke and in the smoke there was a man. They waited for the smoke to clear until the person was visible. It's you. Said Sasuke. Hey guys long time no see. Said Aruka smiling. Aruka sensei what are you doing here? Asked Sakura. I'm here to welcome you back and congratulate you on passing the second phase of the Chunin exams. Said Aruka smiling. Aruka told them about the purpose of the second exam, which in addition to survival, was to test the integrity of the ninja, to not read classified documents or in this case the scrolls. After that he bid them farewell and they went into the tower's inner area. Naruto found out that Gara's team had already arrived as well as Kabuto's team. After taking Sakura and Sasuke in the designated medical ward, he went to the arena. When Naruto got there he saw Gara. Naruto cipher. He said in that same monotonous tone he always used. Gara. Naruto. I gonna fun killing you. Gara said with a sadistic grin. Like I said before you are welcome to try. Naruto. We will see. Gara said before he disappeared with a body flicker. With Kabuto. Kabuto and his team meet with Orochimaru before the next stage of the exam start and Kabuto gives him the intel he's gathered on Sasuke. Orochimaru warns them about Naruto's power. Naruto maybe I said consider serving him. Kabuto. Two days later. The second phase of the exams was now over, the teams that made it were. Team 7, 8 and 10, Guy's team, the Sound team, the Sand team and Kabuto's team. The teams assembled in the arena that Naruto and Gara were before with the Hokage standing in front of the Genin with their Jonin senseis behind him. He told them that the Chunin exams serve the purpose of not only testing ninja, but also of moderating the levels of the ninja in each nation, as well as developing friendship. Just tell me the details of the exam I can handle anything you can throw at me. Said Gara when the Hokage finished speaking and answering other questions. Very well I will now tell you exactly what the details of the third exam are. Said the Hokage. Just then Heid appeared bowing in front of the Hokage and asked him if he could speak first, to which the Hokage obliged. Heid explained that they needed to hold a preliminary as there were too many people which was meet with cries of outrage, but he justified it by talking about the fact that many important nobles and feudal lords would be coming to see them and they didn't want to waste their time and that they were only looking for the best of the best shinobi. 
the preliminaries will begin immediately if any of you cough aren't in top physical condition, cough now is the time to quit. Said Haid. The Budo gave up, but no one else did. Sakura wanted Sasuke to, but he told her that the only reason he fights is to test himself, and that all the best are here. So what am I supposed to just watch you suffer? I can't bear to watch. Cried Sakura. Then don't watch. But stay out of it has nothing to do with you. I am an Avenger whether I become a Chunin or not means less than nothing to me. My goal is to test myself against the best, and the best of the best are all here. Replied Sasuke. Sasuke she just cares about you, you don't have to be so mean. Naruto said. Naruto you are one of the ones I want to fight the most. Said Sasuke grinning. Weakling you don't interest me. Naruto thought. Now, the preliminaries will follow sudden death elimination of one-on-one -on -one matches, with only the winner moving on to the third exam. As for the rules there are none, you will fight until one dies or concedes defeat or is rendered physically incapable of continuing. Naturally those who are losing are encouraged to quit, to avoid having a fatal outcome, also as Proctor I will intervene if the situation seems hopeless to save as many lives as possible. Now we will see what fate is in store for you. Said Haid. Anko spoke a command and a panel on the back wall diagonal from the hands opened revealing a screen. The panel you see will give the names of the two competitors who are chosen completely at random. I guess there is nothing more to say so let's begin. Concluded Haid. The screen begun going through names and landed on. Sasuke Chiha vs Yoroi Akado. Could everyone whose name was not just shown please go to the upper level. Said Haid. The Kashi walked by Sasuke and said don't use your Sharingan if you let that curse seal take over, I'll have to jump in and stop the match. Good luck. Stop the match. Thought Sasuke in fear of not being able to fight. Good Sasuke Chiha, Yoroi Akado are you ready? Asked Haid. Yeah. Confirmed Sasuke. Yes. Agreed Yoroi. Yoroi's appearance was greatly concealed by the mask he wore around his mouth that hung to around his neck, sunglasses that obscured his eyes, and his forehead protector which he wore like a bandana. He also wore what appeared to be the standard attire of his team consisting of a high-collared sleeveless navy blue shirt with a short-sleeved white one underneath, a simple obi around his waist, pants, sandals and fingerless gloves. In that case let the first match of the preliminaries begin. Announced Haid. Sasuke jumped back and pulled out a kunai, while Yoroi put his hand in front of his body and surrounded it with chakra. Yoroi flung three shuriken at Sasuke and who sent them back with his kunai. Aw. Oh. Cringed Sasuke. Damn it this thing is responding to my chakra. Thought Sasuke as he raised his hand to his curse seal. You're mine. Shouted Yoroi as he charged at Sasuke. Sasuke swept his leg and locked Yoroi's arm between his legs. Got him. Sasuke smirked thinking he had him captured, but then Yoroi turned his hand around and grabbed Sasuke's collar. I feel so weak. Thought Sasuke. Yoroi then brought his arm down and intended to hit Sasuke's solar plexus, but Sasuke released his hold and slid away. Got you. Said Yoroi who leapt up and grabbed Sasuke by his head and pushed him to the ground. My chakra, what are you doing? Gasped Sasuke. Aha you're just noticing it now, are you? Laughed Yoroi. Uh so weak, what am I going to do? thought Sasuke. At that moment thought about how weak he was compared to others. Zabuza Naruto the grass ninja and Itachi. Why am I so weak? Sasuke thought. Sasuke are you gonna get beaten by this weakling? If you can't even beat this weakling then how are you gonna kill your brother? Naruto. Hearing Naruto say this lit a fire inside Sasuke. I won't lose here. Said Sasuke. Sasuke coiled up his legs and extended them quickly pushing Yoroi off him. When he was getting up he saw Lee. That's it. He thought before charging at Yoroi. Sasuke flipped onto his hand and gave Yoroi a powerful super kick which sent him into the air. Sasuke then used a dancing leaf shadow and appeared behind Yoroi in midair. Okay I'll admit I borrowed that move, but from here, it's all original. Said Sasuke. Sasuke swung his leg to kick Yoroi in the ribs. Yoroi blocked it, but it was a distraction as Sasuke used the momentum to swing his arm up and nail Yoroi in his neck and send him flying down. Come back I'm not done yet. Said Sasuke who then kicked him down and finally gave him an axe kick smashing him onto the floor while saying Lion's Barrage. Hey, eight looked at Yorway and Sasuke, Yorway was unconscious and Sasuke was still conscious but tired. Winner, Sasuke Chiha. Hey, eight announced. The Kashi appeared behind Sasuke and said let's go we need to get that mark sealed up. Can't we go after the matches? Asked Sasuke. No sorry. Said Kakashi giving his eye smile and body flickered with Sasuke. After they left .the board spit out two more names. Next match Shino Aburam vs Akuabumi, will the contestants please come down. Called Haid. Line break. Sasuke and Kakashi were in a dimly lit room with candles being the only light source. 
Sasuke was shirtless and sat in the middle of a large seal array. Okay Sasuke this seal I'm about to put on you will seal up the curse mark, however, it is only as strong as you will, so you have to make sure it doesn't break. Said Kakashi. Kakashi made numerous hand signs before saying curse sealing. Sasuke cried out in pain for a while, as all the kanji crawled across the floor and his body and went inside the curse mark, forming a ring around the mark at which point he passed out. Line break. If you fight me you won't be able to recover. Forfeit. Said Shino in his stoic monotone voice. Hey what do you know looks like I have a bit of movement in one. Said Zaku as his left arm started twitching before he pulled it out of the sling and aimed it at Shino. One good arm is all I need to beat you. Shouted Zaku as he charged at Shino. Zaku attempted a straight punch at Shino's face, but Shino raised his arm and blocked it. I told you, you can't beat me. Spoke Shino. Oh yeah slicing sound wave. Shouted Zaku as air came rushing out of the hole in his palm which blasted Shino away. Line break. Why you've grown Kakashi to think you can perform the curse ceiling. Said Orochimaru who appeared from behind a pillar. You. What are you doing here? Demanded Kakashi taking a defensive stance. Long time no see, Kakashi, but I didn't come here for you. I have some business with that boy behind you. Replied Orochimaru. What do you want with Sasuke? Asked Kakashi narrowing his single eye. It seems as though you have gained something since the last time we met, the Sharingan in your left eye, how I envy your good fortune. Said Orochimaru who then paused before continuing. It is only fair that I should want it too. Don't you think? The power of the Uchiha. Finished Orochimaru. Line break. Shino calmly stood up and stared down Zaku. I told you, you can't beat me, look behind you. Said Shino. Zaku looked behind him and his eyes widened seeing heaps of bugs when Shino spoke again, you are trapped now you have one arm which you can use to attack me, but if you do, my bugs will be upon you. On the other hand, you could attack my bugs, but that would leave you open to me. It's always a good idea to have an ace in the hole. Finished Shino who began to gather up his chakra while forming the ram sign. Line break. You know the sound village that everyone is so curious about, it's mine. Said Orochimaru. You see in order to play the game you need pieces to put on the chessboard, willing pawns. Elaborated Orochimaru. So, is Sasuke one of these pawns? Asked Kakashi. No, Sasuke is a much more valuable piece than a pawn. Said Orochimaru. Line break. Zaku's other arm started to twitch, and he pulled it out of his sling. Hey, what do you know I got movement in my other arm as well. Always have an ace in the hole isn't that what you said? Asked Zaku who then fully extended his arm and pointed one at Shino and one at the bug slicing sound wave shouted Zaku. Nothing came out of his wind holes, but his arms were blasted off at the elbow. Ugh what is this? Cried Zaku in pain. Shino appeared behind Zaku and spoke I plugged up both of you arms, just in case you were faking. It seems I was wise to do so. Well I did say an ace in the hole is good, two aces in the hole, is better. Said Shino who then punched Zaku in the back sending him sprawling on the ground and almost unconscious. Hey check Zaku before announcing winner, Shino Aburam. Line break. Orochimaru stepped forward towards Sasuke, and Kakashi charged up a lighting blade in response. Take one more step and one of us will die here. I don't care if you're one of the Sanin, the legendary three ninja, come any closer to Sasuke, and I'll kill you. Shouted Kakashi his lone eye blazing in fury. Orochimaru started laughing and then looked Kakashi straight in the eye Kakashi you're very brave and very stupid. You already know that you are not on my level. Your student Naruto even confirmed that. Well anyway I leave for now, but Sasuke is an Avenger one day he will come looking for me in search of power. Said Orochimaru as he walked away before he paused and said unless you follow through with your threat to kill me that is. Stated Orochimaru while releasing a bit of bloodlust. Kakashi was terrified, but kept his lighting blade going in an attempt to hide his fear. Orochimaru kept laughing and walked away until he disappeared from sight. One of us will die here. I must have been out of my mind. Thought Kakashi in fear. He then took Sasuke to the hospital. Kakashi then used a body flicker and appeared behind Naruto and Sakura. Oh Kakashi-sensei you're back. How's Sasuke? Asked Sakura. Oh he's fine, but I think you should be more worried about yourself now. Look. Said Kakashi pointing towards the board as it showed. Sakura Haruno vs Ino Yamanaka. The two begin fighting instantly, although they both fail to successfully attack the other. Neji wonders if their fighting skill is the best Kanoichi can do, only for Tenten to state that their lack of fighting prowess is not because they are female, but rather because they are restraining themselves. Sakura, unwilling to lose to Ino and not happy with the fact that Ino is pulling her punches and taking pity on her, insults Ino. The flashback is shown, where Ino teaches Sakura about the significance of flowers in an arrangement. She uses the cosmos flower as an example, and that Thoralwart works to complement it. 
Sakura asks if that means she's just there to compliment Ino's beauty, to which she denies, adding Sakura as a bud waiting to bloom. Another memory is shown, where Sakura tells Ino that when she chooses to wear her forehead protector properly, that's when she becomes a true shinobi. After trading insults, Sakura removes her forehead protector from her head and places it on her forehead, Ino removes hers from her waist and also places it on her forehead. As true rivals, the pair then rush at one another, finally deciding to take the battle seriously. Sakura and Ino continue exchanging blows with neither able to gain the upper hand and running out of chakra. She berates Ino for being too focused on beauty rather than her kanoichi skills, causing her to cut her hair off and throw it on the ground. Desperate, Ino decides to use mind-body transfer to force Sakura to forfeit, despite knowing how inaccurate it is and that she will be left immobile if it misses. Sakura dodges the attack and appears to have won, but finds herself trapped by the strands of Ino's cut hair, which have been infused with chakra to form a binding rope. Ino reveals to only have pretended to miss on purpose, intending to lead her into the trap. She uses mind-body transfer again, knowing it can't miss now, and succeeds on gaining control of Sakura's body. Having gained control, Ino tries to make Sakura forfeit the match. Just then, Naruto yells at her to not to give up, prompting inner Sakura to appear and force Ino out of her head. Although confused by what happened, Ino lacks the energy to try again. Kakashi presumes that Ino's lack of chakra was a factor in Sakura's small victory, but also takes note of her strong will. They both charge at each other to exchange final blows, resulting in a double knockout. Hei decides that neither of them will pass to the next round. Hunkuro vs Misumi Kabuto's teammate. Pankram easily wins his battle against Misumi by tricking him into attacking Karasu Kankram's puppet. In retaliation, Karasu snaps Misumi's neck, though he survives due to his ability to contort himself. Shikamaru vs Kin. Shikamaru tries the shadow imitation technique, but Kin easily evades and throws some senbin with bells attached at him. Shikamaru recognizes the trick and mocks her for using such basic techniques. Kin then rings the bells on the senbin, starting her genjutsu. Shikamaru gets caught in Kin's bell ring genjutsu, unable to move, while Kin proceeds to attack him with more senbin. Havur, when Kin tries to attack again, she suddenly realizes that she can't move. Shikamaru tells her that he extended his shadow imitation technique through the shadow of the wire she's holding. He then throws a shuriken at Kin, which she imitates. When Shikamaru ducks backwards to evade it, Kin is forced to imitate him, but she did not realize that she was too close to the wall, hitting her head and knocking herself out. Naruto vs Kiba. Hey look Akamaru it's us against the dead last dot looks we just won the lottery. Kiba. Akamaru barked in agreement. Next match Kiba in Yuzuka vs Naruto Uzumaki, will the contestants please come down. Called Hate. Sorry Kakashi but your boy will lose. It doesn't matter how much he has changed. He still does not stand a chance against Kiba. Kurenai. Is that so? Let's make a bet if Naruto wins you have to do one request for Naruto no matter what it is. Kakashi. And if Kiba wins you have to stop reading those perverted books for a year and come early to all your meetings. Kurenai. They both agreed to the bet. Kurenai Kiba does not stand a chance against Naruto. He is probably the strongest of the Chunin candidates. Thought Kakashi. I wonder how much stronger he has gotten since he became a Genin. Probably not much. Thought Kiba. Look I feel sorry for you so I am gonna finish you with one blow. Kiba. Let's just fight Kiba. I got better things to do than waste my time on you. Naruto. You sure talk tough for a dead last. Kiba. If you are ready you can begin. Hey. Yes both Naruto and Kiba said. Begin said hey. Tunneling Fang. Shouted Kiba as he leapt at Naruto and begun spinning. Before Kiba could hit Naruto. Naruto opened a garganta in front of him. Kiba went through it. Naruto went in the garganta and closed it. Would woof wooof where is Master Akamaru said. Others had the same thought. In Hueco Mundo. Kiba looked around to see he was surrounded by monsters hollows. What are these monsters? Kiba. They are hollows. They feed on human souls. Naruto said as he appeared. But Kiba. All these are hollows were former humans. Naruto. Look fellas there is a human a hollow said to the others. Look that guy next to him he is a H. Before the hollow could finish its sentence Naruto killed it with a bala. Kiba let me show you some of my power. Imprison Mursailago Naruto. What is this power Kiba thought as he felt Naruto's intense spiritual pressure. That power it can't be thought Grimjo and Harable. After Naruto released his first form. He created a javelin and in an instant he massacred the hollows. Is this really Naruto Kiba thought? Kiba know this you will never be on my level, Naruto said while releasing his pressure on Kiba. Naruto when did you get so strong? Kiba thought while struggling to breath. Elquiora it really is you. Harable said. 
Let's fight you bastard I want to see if you have gotten any stronger. Grimjo. Maybe some other time Naruto said as he opened a garganta. Then I will be waiting for you bastard Grimjo. Naruto reverted back to his base form and threw Kiba through the garganta. He also went through. In the stadium. Naruto and Kiba appear through the garganta. They are back. Kurin I thought. Kiba surrender. Naruto whispered to Kiba. I surrender Kiba. Why would he surrender? Kurin I thought. Winner of the match Naruto. Hey. Everyone stared at Naruto and most were thinking what did he do to Kiba. Kurin I don't forget our bet. Kakashi. Hey announced that would have a small break. Time skip. On with the next match. Said Heid as the board started going through names before landing on. Neji Hyuga vs Hinata Hyuga. Both walked down, Neji with a purposeful stride and Hinata with a timid stride. I never thought that we would have to fight each other Hinata. Said Neji. Nor I, brother. Replied Hinata. Huh, brother. Are they brother and sister? Asked Naruto while slightly raising his left eyebrow. No they're both members of the Hyuga clan. Technically they're cousins. Answered Kakashi. Still their family it must be hard for them. Said Sakura. It may not be as hard you think, I heard that there is some bad blood between the main and branch houses. The branch family, which Neji is a part of, is upset with something the main family, which Hinata is a part of, did. Additionally Neji is considered a genius of the clan, while Hinata is seen as a disgrace. Furthermore Neji, being a branch member is forced into being under the control of the main branch. Finished Lee. Give up Hinata. You can't deceive my eyes when you looked up, you remembered your past, your bitter past. Then you glanced down and thought what would happen if you fought me and realized you would lose. Also your habit of raising your arm up in front of yourself while touching your lip is your way of putting a wall between us. People can't change, once a failure always a failure. You never really wanted to be in the Chunin exams, but to apply you need a team of three, and you didn't want to let Kiba or Shino down, didn't you? Said Neji with increasing intensity. No you're wrong I wanted to see if I could change. Said Hanada. Like I said once a failure always a failure. People can't change. Said Neji. Don't listen to him Hinata, me and Shino believe in you. You can change. Said Kiba. Um, some fire has returned to her eyes. Thought Neji. Hinata made hand signs before shouting Byakugan. Hinata took a stance and said defend yourself brother. Neji mirrored the stance. Let the fourth match begin. Said Haid. Neji charged and shot an open palm strike at Hinata which she blocked with her own palm thrust to the inside of Neji's arm, which sent chakra flying out of their hands. This kept up until Hinata struck Neji in his stomach. Did she get him? Asked Sakura. Akashi raised his headband and had a look amazing. Was all he said. Neji pulled Hinata's sleeve back and there were a bunch of angry looking red marks on her arm. You mean, all this time you were, mumbled Hinata. Yes, I have sealed all the chakra points in your arms. You can no longer use the gentle fist as you can no longer eject chakra from your hands. Give up. Commanded Neji. Hinata trembled, unsure of herself, when Neji spoke up again. Hinata you are the pampered offspring of the main branch. Despite this, you are too gentle and caring you should never have become a shinobi. As a shinobi you are meant to be cruel, uncaring and hold no sympathy for others in your way, you can't do this as it conflicts with your very nature, and therefore you are suffering. Spoke Neji condescendingly. Brother while it is true I have been suffering, you have been suffering much more than I. Hinata said softly. Neji's eyes hardened in an instant and he sent two palm thrusts, one to her gut and one to her face. She then tried to rise but coughed up a fair bit of blood. After regaining herself she got up again, but Hei could tell it was over and was about to say so, but Neji charged at Hinata with murder in his eyes. As Neji was about two meters away all of the leaf jonin and Hei jumped in to save Hinata. Neji you told me you wouldn't let this whole main branch thing affect you. Said Guy. Hinata coughed up more blood and Kurinai called for medics. The recovered Kiba jumped down to attack Neji, but Shino created a wall with his bug stopping him. You'll pay. You hear me I'll get you dot said Kiba. HMPH there is no way you can beat me. Scoffed Neji before walking off. As Neji walked back to the stands. Tamari vs Tenten. Tenten makes the first move and Tamari easily dodges it. Team Guy was surprised that no weapon could even scratch or hit Tamari. Tenten tries another attack that Tamari repels using wind from her giant folding fan, before warning Tenten that if she sees all three stars, moons in the English anime, in her fan, the fight will be over. Tenten uses her twin rising dragons technique. Uncovering the second star, Tamari repels the attack, then Tenten uses strings to reuse the weapons. Uncovering the third star, Tamari repels the attack and traps Tenten in a cyclone. When Tenten falls from the cyclone, Tamari makes her land on her fan, knocking her out. 
After being declared winner, Tamari tries to throw Tenten on the many weapons scattered on the floor, but Rock Lee descends and catches her. He then attacks Tamari, only to be stopped by Might Guy, who warns the Suna Shinobi to not underestimate Lee. Lee vs. Garth. After a long wait, Rock Lee is matched to fight against Garth. He begins the fight by attacking with Taijutsu, but his attacks are blocked by Gara's sand. To bypass the speed of his shield, Guy permits Lee to remove his leg weights. In doing so, Lee's speed increases and he manages to land hits, only to discover Gara's body is coated in sand. Opening the first of the eight gates, Lee launches Gara into the air with several kicks. Catching him with his bandages, Lee uses the front lotus, only to discover he used it on a clone. Lee's target was actually only a decoy, a hollow clone made of sand. Gara reappears and fights Lee, who is now weak from using his front lotus again. Lee quickly recovers, demonstrating his ability to open the second gate. He then powers himself up by opening the third gate, frightening even Gara. Guy and Neji have flashbacks to before Lee became a Genin, and right after he became one, showing his determination to be a respectable ninja through only the use of Taijutsu. Lee's speed proved too much for Gara, and his sand was no longer able to form a shield fast enough to be of use. Lee opened the fifth gate and used his most powerful attack, Reverse Lotus. Gara survived this final blow due to him softening his fall by turning his gourd into sand. Lee went unconscious after using the Reverse Lotus. Gara was about to send his sand at Lee to kill him. Until he felt a pressure on him. What is this pressure, Gara? Gara looked to the stands to see Naruto glaring at him. Gara decided to spare Lee's life. Gara went back to the stands. Medics came to get Lee. Baki, Konkuro, and Tamari were surprised to see Gara spare his opponent. Osu vs. Choji. Jai used his human bullet tank technique with the assumption that he was safe from Dosu's sound technique, but Dosu attacked and defeated him with one blow. After the final fight all the Genin who made it through to the finals came, down.The Hokage told them that the exam finals would happen in a month to give them time to prepare and allow important dignitaries to arrive. Now to decide who will face who in the finals you will each draw a number. Said the Hokage. After everyone drew and said their number the matches were determined as follows. First match Neji vs Sasuke. Second match. Konkuro vs Shino. Third match. Naruto vs Gara. Fourth match. Tamari vs Dosu. Fifth match. Fourth match. Winner vs Shikamaru. You now know who you will be facing, so use this month to plan accordingly and also to rest and recover. Until then, let us adjourn until next month. Finished the Hokage. Line break. Elsewhere, Kabuto prepares to kidnap Sasuke under Orochimaru's orders, but he is stopped by Kakashi and is forced to retreat. Line break. After the Hokage's announcement Naruto left and begun to wander around the leaf village until he came by the hot springs and saw a 50-something-year-old man looking in on the women's baths. Pervert. Naruto screamed at the man causing him to fall and hit the side of the hot springs. The women inside heard the noise and ran away covering themselves up causing the man to cry. The man looked at Naruto and growled. You just destroyed my research. Shouted the man. Your godfather has appeared. Karama. The perverted son in. Naruto thought. I wonder how peeping at girls counts at research. Naruto said to Jiraiya. It is very important research do know how many men count on that. Jiraiya. Well anyway goodbye, Naruto said before starting walking away. That snake has better manners than him even if he is a traitor. Naruto whispered. Jiraiya heard this. Orochimaru. He met him Jiraiya thought. Hey wait, kid when did you meet Orochimaru? Asked Jiraiya. I met him during the second test of the Chunin exams. Later pervert. Said Naruto. Wait who are you kid? Jiraiya. Naruto Alquiora Cypher formerly Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto. Minato's brat. He looks nothing like him now. Hey it's the pervert let's get him. Shouted the women from the bath now fully clothed. Oh crap I better run. Thought Jiraiya who was chased by about 50 angry women. Line break. After speaking to Naruto. Jiraiya goes to speak to Hiruzen about Naruto. Hiruzen then tells him about Naruto. Jiraiya was surprised to hear of Naruto's abilities and that he defeated Kakashi. Time skip night. At Kikyo Castle Dosu tries to kill Gara so he can fight Sasuke in the finals, only to be easily killed by Gar. Baki and Kabuto look on from the sidelines having witnessed the attack. Baki and Kabuto then discuss their plans to attack Konoha. Hey Jack heard the conversation. After he heard the plans, he attempts to leave in order to notify the third Hokage, but he is killed by Baki. Hayate's body was later found by a group of Anbu with Ikgao Yuzuki, wondering aloud what had happened. Next day. Sakura sits in her bedroom worried about Sasuke. Meanwhile, the third Hokage has a meeting with the Jimin regarding Hayate Jakim's body found near Kikim Castle. They discuss Orochimaru's involvement, although the Hokage concludes that they do not have any information regarding to the latter. 
he also expresses his trust to the shinobi that if Odagakure were to invade Konohagakure, they would assemble and fight. Later. Sakura goes to Yamanaka Flowers to buy flowers for Sasuke, where Ino is in charge of running the shop. After deducing that Sakura is there to buy flowers for Sasuke, Ino decides to visit him as well. Ino picks a rose, and Sakura picks two daffodils for Sasuke and Dot on their way, they hear Chinjai eating loudly. Peeking through an open window, they spot Asuma Suratobi and Shikamaru, who are seated with Choji. In exchange for training with Shikamaru every day, Asuma has been treating Choji to barbeque. In the woods, Neji is shown training with Tintin. During his training, Neji collapses after having used too much chakra. Team Kurinai trains in the woods too, to prepare for Shino's match. Elsewhere, the three Sand siblings and Baki secretly discuss their invasion plans. At the hospital, the nurse permits Ino and Sakura only five minutes of visitation due of Sasuke's condition, however, Sasuke and his clothes are missing. Kakashi is undergoing the cliff climbing practice and after nearly falling to his death, activates the first gate. Kakashi uses his increased strength to make it to the top of the rock, only to see Sasuke waiting there for him. Next day. Naruto around the village. He came across Kurinai while walking. She told him about the bet with Kakashi. Naruto told her it was fine. She didn't need to do anything for him. She told him a bet is a bet. Naruto then just told her to leave him alone. That was his request of her. Two days later. So are you going to train? You are already powerful with your two release forms. Karama. I would like to learn more jutsus. Naruto. Well that is good. You should get the key from the toads. I if you do that I will be able to lend you my power Karama. That means I will have to interact with Jiraiya Naruto. Yeah I know you don't like him. If it would make you feel better you can beat the guy up Karama. Fine I guess. Naruto. Jiraiya was giggling as he was watching the women took off their towels. I see you haven't learned your lesson yet. Naruto said he appeared next to him Jiraiya was a little bit startled but he didn't fall like last time. What do you want kid? Jiraiya. You have something that belongs to me. I want it. Naruto I have no clue what you are talking about. Jiraiya. The key Jiraiya. Naruto. He knows about the key. Did the nine tails tell him. Jiraiya thought Naruto you can't trust the fox. It is only trying to fool you into helping it escape. Jiraiya the nine tails knows it is safe with me from the masked man. It also knows if it tries to betray me I will devour it. Naruto devour the nine tails. You can do that. Jiraiya. I can also devour human souls. Naruto. That's a dangerous ability. Jiraiya thought. But if you want the key you will have to beat me in a fight. Jiraiya Naruto accepts the fight. Naruto opens a garganta and kicks Jiraiya through it. In Hueco Mundo. Jiraiya looked around to see he was in a desert filled with monsters. What are these monsters? Jiraiya. They are spiritual beings that are called hollows. They feed on human souls. Naruto said as he appeared feed on human souls. Then that means you are also hollow. Jiraiya yes I am. Naruto. When Grimjo sensed Naruto he made his way to his location. Okuyora. Grimjo said before trying to slash Naruto Naruto blocks the attack with his sword. As Naruto blocked sparks could be seen. The two got into a heated sword fight. As their swords clashed flashes of green and blue could be seen. How are they so fast? Jiraiya said as he only could see green and blue blurs, the low-ranking hollows made themselves scarce. Jiraiya distanced himself from the battle. Grimjo's flashed away from Naruto and a fired a zero at him. Naruto responded with a certain with his zero of his own. The zeros collided with each other before they exploded. Ahaha. I have been waiting for this moment. Grind Pantera Grimjo said before entering his release state. As he entered his release state he was surrounded by a blue aura. After a few seconds the aura faded and Grimjo's released form was revealed. Jiraiya was sweating as he felt Grimjo's intense riatsu. Just what is this pressure? Jiraiya. Grimjo used Sanito to appear in front of Naruto. He punched Naruto into the air. He appeared behind Naruto and kicked him to the ground. I should help the kid, but why can't I move? Jiraiya said as he was affected by the Riyadu boys will be boys. Haribol said as she appeared next to Jiraiya, hello beautiful who might you be? Jiraiya. Dear Haribol. Don't worry about Ulquiora he can handle himself. Haribol Ulquiora that's what that guy called Naruto before he attacked. Jiraiya Naruto is that his name now. So he reincarnated after his death Haribol reincarnation. Such a concept truly exist, Jiraiya thought fascinated come on Ulquiora take this serious. Grimjo. Naruto got up. Imprison Mursai Lago Naruto. When Naruto entered his release form. Jiraiya sank to his knees as he felt Naruto's Riatsu. The Riatsu of the two Espada was overwhelming him. This intense pressure. It can drive a person crazy. It feels like my life is being squeezed away. Jiraiya thought poor human. Harrible thought. Seeing the state Jiraiya was in. 
Naruto made a garganta which led to the leaf village. Haribo threw Jiraiya through it. She decided to go back to Las Notches. She would survey the battle from the there. That's it. Grimjo. Naruto creates a javelin. He flashes in front of Grimjo. Naruto strikes him with him with a javelin. Grimjo catches with it with hand. What's wrong it seems you've gotten weaker. Grimjo said before hitting Naruto with a powerful punch which sent him flying. Grimjo appeared behind him struck him with his claws. The attack rips off his arm. Well you were dead. I have gotten a lot stronger. Grimjo said before trying to stomp on him. Naruto Sanito away from him. Grimjo's stomp made a large crater in the ground. Why did you come here in the first place? Karama. I thought this would be the perfect venue for my battle with Jiraiya. I forgot about Grimjo impulsiveness. Naruto thought as his arm healed, this doesn't look good kid. Karama. I am well aware of that. Naruto thought. It seems Alquiora has gotten weaker. He must have awakened recently if he has this level of strength. Haribo said as she watched it through the Garganta broadcast. Naruto Sanito's in front of Grimjo. He strikes Grimjo with his javelin. Grimjo blocks with arm. As Naruto's javelin struck his arm the ground got destroyed beneath the feet. When the dust settled Grimjo appeared behind Naruto aiming a claw strike at him. Naruto turned around quickly to stab him. Grimjo quickly dodged the javelin and kicked Naruto away. Grimjo Sanito's behind the flying Naruto. Naruto quickly twisted his body around to slash Grimjo. Grimjo blocked with his hand. Naruto quickly distanced himself from Grimjo. Grimjo Sanito's in front of Naruto. He started throwing punches and tried kicking Naruto. Naruto dodged most but decided to take a punch in order to land an attack on Grimjo. He stabbed Grimjo in the chest. After getting stabbed Grimjo roared loudly. The roar produced a strong sonic wave that sent Naruto flying. Bara de la Pantera Grimjo. Grimjo fires up to five acutely shaped bombs from his elbow. One round can destroy a column over 30 meters in diameter. He fired the bombs at Naruto. Naruto luckily Sanito it away from the bombs before they exploded. Naruto use your second release form. That's the only way you are gonna win. Karama if he has reached a second release it won't matter. I have had only a few weeks to regain my powers. Meanwhile he has had hundreds of years to improve. Naruto thought what will you do Alquiora? At this rate you will die if you don't do something. Haribo thought ha ha Finally I get to prove I am superior to you. Grimjo he got ready to fire his Siro Oscuras. As Naruto saw this he prepared his own Siro. When they both their Siros were ready they fired it. The Siros clashed before Grimjo's Siro overpowered Naruto's. Naruto got hit by the Siro. It exploded upon contact. Naruto suffered severe damage from the Siro. His regeneration was weakened a bit. Karama pitched in to help Naruto regenerate. Did use it. Karama. Fine. Naruto thought. Grimjo have you achieved it? Naruto. Achieved what? Grimjo. Segunda Atapa. Naruto. Second release that's impossible. Don't tell me, Grimjo judging by his reaction Naruto concluded that Grimjo didn't achieve that state. Suddenly Naruto's body was enveloped in a green aura. Grimjo felt despair as he felt Naruto's increase in Riatsu. The green aura faded and Grimjo saw his transformation. He's achieved it. Grimjo thought as he stood still in fear, he had this up his sleeve. Terrible. Grimjo wanted to move, but he was stopped as Naruto released his intense Riatsu on him. That's enough out of you. Naruto said before flying to the sky. Grimjo sensed a lot of Ryuku coming from the javelin. Lanza del Relampago Naruto said before throwing it. As the lance was almost near him. So I am still not stronger than you. Grimjo thought with a smile the lance landed in front of him and exploded. When the dust cleared. Naruto saw that Grimjo was unconscious. He was severely injured. I win. Naruto thought as his vision was getting blurry, he succumbed to his injuries and fainted. Parable made her way to them. She took them both to Las Notches. With Jiraiya. When Jiraiya was thrown through the Garganta he landed at the hot springs. When the ladies saw him they wanted to beat him up. They didn't as they saw how he struggled to breath. Jiraiya was hyperventilating before passed out. The ladies decided to take him to the hospital. Thirty minutes later. Naruto woke up to see he was in one of the healing tubes in the palace. So you are finally awake. Parable. Parable. Naruto. Parable opened the tube for him. As Naruto got out he looked at Grimjo. Who was in a tube. Naruto glared at him. That was quite the battle you had. Haribo who would have thought that idiot would give me that much trouble. Naruto well you also got much weaker. Haribo I am gonna have to rectify that. Naruto so you are gonna stay and train. Haribo, yes. Since time passes faster here I will get enough training done in a month. Naruto I wonder just how much stronger he is going to get. Haribo thought so what happened after I died. Naruto Naruto was filled in about everything which took place after his death. 
He was shocked to learn Aizen was imprisoned. After talking with Haribo. Naruto made a garganta and went to Karakura town. When Naruto got there decided to take a walk through the town. He came across Orihim walking with her son. Orihim was shocked to see Naruto. Orihim teared up. Bulky Ora san you are alive. I am glad. Orihim, you are really are a strange individual Naruto smiled Orihim smiled back at him. Even though I almost killed your husband. You do not even resent me one bit Naruto thought yeah she's definitely strange. Kurama so who's the little one? Naruto said as he bent down to Orohim's son, introduce yourself to Okuyora san Orohim nice to meet you Okuyora san My name's Kazui Kurosaki Kazui said in a cheerful tone. It's nice to meet you too Kazui. Naruto this boy is going to become a monster one day. Naruto thought as he used his pesquisa on him, the three talked for a while. It was nice chatting with you. Tell Ichigo I said hi. Naruto said as he opened a garganta goodbye Okuyora san Kazui. After that Naruto went through it. When Naruto got back to Hueco Mundo. He decided begin his training. With Jiraiya. When Jiraiya woke up. He saw Hiruzen standing over him. Good morning Jiraiya. How do you feel Hiruzen I feel fine. Jiraiya. What happened to make you pass out? Hiruzen Jiraiya remembered the battle between Naruto and Grimjo. Oh no the kid's in danger. Jiraiya said worried who? Hiruzen. Naruto. Jiraiya. What happened? Hiruzen asked worried Jiraiya told him about how Naruto asked for the key. And how it led to the battle between the two Espada. Do you know where they are? Hiruzen. They are probably in another dimension. Jiraiya said as he remembered Naruto made a portal this worried Hiruzen even further. All we can do now is hope the kid will pull through. Jiraiya said gritting his teeth it pained him knowing he was too weak to help his godson. With Naruto. He sneezed. It looks like someone's talking about you. Good things I hope. Naruto.